April 18, 1942. Four months after the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor, American morale was at an all-time low. The U.S. had been caught off guard, and Japan's seemingly unstoppable military was advancing throughout the Pacific. The American people needed hope and a sign that Japan was not invincible. That's when one man, Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle, hatched a daring plan. Launch an air raid on the Japanese mainland, striking at the heart of the enemy itself. It was audacious, it was dangerous, and it was almost impossible. In this video, we bring you the Doolittle Raid, a mission that would forever change the course of World War II. Hello everyone and welcome to Infinite Altitudes, the channel that brings you everything about aviation. After Pearl Harbor, the US Navy was severely bruised, almost broken. The top brass knew that they had to respond and show Japan that America would not back down. Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle, a legendary aviator and aeronautical engineer, was tasked with devising a mission that would strike fear into the Japanese and uplift the American spirit. His plan, launch B-25 Mitchell bombers from an aircraft carrier to bomb Tokyo and other major Japanese cities. But there was a major problem. No one had ever launched bombers from a carrier before, and the aircraft would not have enough fuel to return to the ship. This was a one-way mission. The plan called for the bombers to hit their targets and then continue on to land in China, where they would hope for rescue. On April 2nd, 1942, the USS Hornet, carrying 16 B-25 bombers, departed from San Francisco. A few days later, the Hornet rendezvoused with the USS Enterprise, which provided air cover for the mission. But just 650 miles from Japan, still a full day ahead of schedule, a Japanese patrol boat spotted the task force. The Americans had no choice but to launch early. If they waited any longer, the element of surprise would be lost. At 8.20 a.m. on 18th April 1942, Jimmy Doolittle climbed into the lead bomber, took a deep breath, and prepared for takeoff. It was a gamble. Launching from so far out meant even less fuel to reach safety in China. One by one, the bombers took off, each plane struggling against the strong headwind. They had never practiced launching in such conditions, but all 16 aircraft managed to get airborne. The Doolittle Raiders were on their way to make history. Are you still with us? Give us a thumbs up to show your support and to motivate us to bring you more such stories from the world of aviation. Getting back to the Doolittle Raid, the bombers flew low over the Pacific to avoid detection, skimming just above the waves. By the afternoon, they reached the Japanese mainland. The primary targets included military facilities, factories, and industrial sites in Tokyo, Yokohama, Nagoya, and Kobe. The raid caused only minor physical damage, but its psychological impact was profound. Japan had believed that its home islands were beyond the reach of American air power. The sight of bombs falling on Tokyo sent shockwaves through the Japanese military and government. For the first time, Japan's leaders faced the reality that their war of expansion could be brought to their very doorstep. The Doolittle Raid was the first time that American aircraft had bombed the Japanese homeland. It forced Japan to divert resources away from its offensive operations to bolster homeland defense, a shift that had long-term strategic implications. After dropping their bombs, the raiders turned toward China, but their ordeal was far from over. The early launch meant they had even less fuel than anticipated. Most of the planes ran out of fuel before reaching their intended landing zones, forcing crews to bail out or crash land in hostile territory. Of the 80 Doolittle Raiders, three were killed during the mission, and eight were captured by the Japanese. Lieutenant Robert Height, Lieutenant Chase Nielsen, and Lieutenant George Barr, among others, endured harsh treatment as prisoners of war. Three of those captured were executed by the Japanese, while another died of malnutrition. Many of the surviving raiders were saved thanks to the bravery of the Chinese people, who risked their lives to help the Americans evade Japanese patrols. However, Japan's retribution against the Chinese was brutal. 
an estimated 250,000 civilians were killed in retaliation for aiding the Americans. Despite the risks, the losses, and the high cost of the mission, the Doolittle Raid achieved what it set out to do. It was a massive morale boost for the American people and the military. In recognition of his leadership, Jimmy Doolittle was promoted two ranks to Brigadier General. What's more, the raid convinced Japan to shift its strategy, ultimately leading to the pivotal Battle of Midway in June 1942, where the tide of war in the Pacific began to turn in favor of the Allies. The Doolittle raid wasn't about the physical damage it caused. It was about sending a message. It showed that America could strike back, even against impossible odds, and it set the stage for a long and hard-fought journey to victory in the Pacific. The Doolittle Raid was a testament to the courage and tenacity of the American airmen who carried it out. These 80 men, knowing the dangers they faced, flew into the unknown with the hope of turning the tide in a war that had shaken the world. Their bravery became a rallying cry, proving that even in the darkest of times, the spirit of resistance and the will to fight back could not be extinguished. The legacy of the Doolittle Raid lives on, a reminder that audacity and courage can change the course of history. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more stories from the world of aviation.